four. Minus four. <laughs> Just change your strategy. That's probably the best. Have you done it? If you've done it and you're creative, well done. Off you pop. Because that's, that's, cre that's creative teaching now. If you can link those, then you, you've, you've got it in your repertoire. And that's all creativity is. is it's having the repertoire to make things make sense to, um, to young people in our context. Come back to that in a bit. I like that list. I like with Medusa. I loved it. I told some kids that I had Medusa in a van parked outside school. And they're all like, they did start crying because I told them it was a story and they were, they were little. And they, I said I want to put her in a zoo. And they were like, oh. And what? <laughs> Secondaries, that's what kids do in primary. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll turn to stone. They'll turn to stone if they look at her. Well, how are we going to get around that? And this girl said, we need the drawer of mirrors. And I thought I was at Hogwarts. <laughs> we were. It was a drawer of mirrors. It was all about light, and obviously they figured it out how to put her in a zoo. Anyway, for me, uh, kids turn up, don't they? They've got baggage that you can see, and some of them, uh, certainly a lot of the students I seem to work with, um, have, have got baggage that we can't see. So our job is to translate the curriculum into something that makes sense to them. And then uh, I've tried to make a picture of it here, really, of uh, helping them get into context. The context being the science lesson. The context being um, getting some buns baked for a charity. Weren't they brilliant? Have you, have you had some cake? Fancy to give them a round of it. I think they're, they're working somewhere. Oh, that's it then, yeah. Hey, yo. Hey, all right. Hey, all right. Hey, all right. Hey, all right. So, I mean, that's just a visual. That's just what our job is, I think, sometimes. But there may be other things as well. And something I do say to a lot of people, especially when they're slagging kids off, is, well, was it worth behaving for? You know that thing you did where it all went wrong? Was it worthwhile? Did it make sense? Did you work hard to make it sense to the kids in front of you? Or did it make sense to the person who had put it on Test Connect and you've downloaded it and you're just spitting it out? Who does it make sense to? And I think that's part of our job as well. Lessons worth behaving for. Um, I was thinking about what makes a good teacher, which I'll come back to. I was then thinking, what, what's teaching? I try and explain it to my brother, who works in a shop. He works in a shop, and he knows all sorts about retail, and I don't get half the stuff he talks about. But I was trying to explain it to him, and so I took my explanation, and I made this high-tech PowerPoint slide for you. And in the corner, you can't really tell, but there's owls, and they're Ofsted. Yeah? <laughs> But there's this thing about coverage and creativity, and actually they're, they're melded together. They're the same thing. It's, if we've got to rely on our repertoire and trust our repertoire and grow our repertoire like you're doing tonight in order, in order for the, to cover the coverage, we shouldn't be slaves to a file, slaves to a folder. Our job is to translate that folder. And I've put in blue boxes here stuff that we need to think about. Managing the classroom, great relationships. We've got, we've got to be mindful of that now. In the integrity of learning, making sure our subject and our children are getting the best from both. Independent learning, which appears all the time now in the Ofsted criteria. And this is the thing I'm, I'm most interested in, is hooking the kids in. Getting a lure. So no matter what we're teaching, making it make sense to the children in the room. I put other things in there. In red, I've just written down what I think you need in order to be a good teacher. And there'll, there'll be other things, but I think if we've got courage, that's good. I think if we've got enthusiasm, and even if we haven't, we can pretend. <laughs> and, and energy, because we haven't got time. And just in the top there, I put hope. And when I, the reason I wrote that down was because uh, when I was an NQT many years ago, 20 years ago in fact, my head of English, I, I was given all the bottom sets, because that, um, that was my classroom management training. It was just the box sets, that's how it used to be done. And uh, my head of English said, How long you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear? And uh, I thought, well, I might as well jack it in then, because I do want to make a difference, as I'm sure you do as well. Just, uh... <laughs> Is it resonating? Some of it will, some of it won't, because that's my list. You don't get your own. But I, I have got a Staples reward card. I'm extremely <laughs> proud of it. I'm often knocking around there. Is it two for one on highlighters? Thanks. I won't have some. 
But that's my list, and I, I haven't got time to tell you the, the reasons behind those, that list, but go away and create your own. If you're a head teacher or a middle leader, go and create your own. What makes a good science teacher? We can be told what a good science teacher is, but let's make our own list. Let's take it into our own hands a little bit. Let's go covert. We can be told what we like, but we can also define it ourselves. In the same way, if we wanted to, we could sit down as a team and decide what outstanding learning is. And we could decide what outstanding drama is, or outstanding English, outstanding leadership. We can write it all down, and then we can put it in big letters on our walls. And if we take our list, put it in a Wordle or something like that, if we take our list, and then get the Ofsted criteria, we will not be surprised to discover it's probably the same thing. And Ofsted will come up with a new category one day, and it's going to be well be soon. So I'm going to come and see you. I'm going to come and see you teach, and I'm going to be like, do you know what? That were buzzing, and I thought it was really great. And you engaged them, and do you know what? That lesson was outstanding with features of spaceship. <laughs> In a few years. It's just a thought. There's two types of teacher, isn't there? There's a teacher when the elephant walks past the window. There's a teacher that goes, Look at me! Look at me, not some. Look at me! And then there's the teacher who goes, There's an elephant. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It used to be like back in the 80s, it was like a ritual when uh, the dog used to come in on the playground, didn't it? And, or a wasp, a wasp in your room, that's good as well, anyway. The elephant outside the classroom last year was the Olympic Games, and I'm sure you all brought that into your lessons. But there's lots of other things we could be doing. You know, whilst we're delivering that coverage, let's bring in the world. Not, this won't resonate with everyone, because there's lots of different types of teachers, and I reflect on my only my own experience. You are here tonight of your own volition, I assume, so you are dolphins. You have the ability to change and the readiness to change. Sometimes we work with absolutely wonderful people who want to learn new things, and they could have been teaching for years. Puppies, that's what we're learning. We just need to know how to learn sometimes, because things can be daunting. And then we have our sleeping bears who are fantastic teachers. Is this resonating with you? Fantastic teachers who just need reminding. And then we have my dance teacher. It's okay, she hated kids. Uh, and now she runs a tile shop, so that's good. She won't that bothered. And I, I've invented this word before literacy experts start freaking out. It just means, are you bothered? And botheredness uh, is, is, is something really important to me. I want my kids to know that I'm bothered about them, and I'm sure you do as well. And everything you do will hopefully demonstrate that. From running a revision session to saying, you know, the little, the little kid whose auntie's got a puppy and he's got a buzzing, and you go, how's that puppy getting along there? And that's how we do it. In special setting, everything is built on that. Everything. And our, our unconditional positive regard. The professional capacity to forgive. It's had quite a profound effect on me. That, and I encourage you, if you don't know anything about it, to go and have a look. Um, our curriculum should enable children to project themselves onto what it is they're learning and they see themselves in it. So they look at this, this is a, a picture of the top of the Empire State Building looking down. I showed this for, to some hard to reach youngsters in Birmingham and they walked in, looked at me, looked at the picture and just said, I could do that. And that was a kid projecting himself onto the image. And it was a good little settler because we got chatting. I mean, I'm quite interested at, to what document they signed before they climbed up. <laughs> little kids are interested what's in their bags. <laughs> and they, they tend to think that there's photographs of their family. Is it okay to have sensitivity on the curriculum still? Because that's quite nice, isn't it? Early years folks and people like that just do this brilliant this stuff. In Barnsley, kids start talking about their granddad. In other, other places, this has been the top half of the time machine. What rules do we need to travel in time? Elbow partner. Go on, what rules do we need to travel in time? 